Hello. In today's lesson, we're covering lesson 3.3 .3 in our fourth grade textbook. We are on page 113. Our topic for today is area models and partial products. Um, you might recall from third grade that area, we found area in geometry section by multiplying the length times the width. And so we're going to take that idea to help us with modeling two-digit numbers by two-digit numbers multiplication. So in this activity, you're going to need uh, four different color pencils, four color markers. You're going to need a green, a blue, an orange, and a violet or a purple color. Okay. So go ahead and grab those materials. Okay, so how can you use a model to break apart factors and make them easier to multiply? So outline a rectangle on a grid to model 13 times 18. Break apart the model into smaller rectangles to show factors broken into tens and ones. Label and shade the smaller rectangles. Use the colors below. So let's first outline our, our 13 by 18. So if we go down here, we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So that's 13 down by 18 across. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So that whole rectangle that I've outlined is a 13 by 18. Now we want to break this into smaller rectangles to actually make it easier to multiply this, to see it using partial products and the area model. So one of our factors is 13. And I'm going to break that into 10 plus 3. My other factor, 18, I want to break that into a 10 and an 8. So 10 and 8. Now, the 10 by 10, use your blue color pencil, and we're going to shade that in. So 10 by 10. And then the 10 by 8, let's use green. I know mine kind of looks green, but it's blue. Okay. So 10 times 8 is modeled with the green. And then the orange, let's use 3 times 10. And finally, our 3 times 8, color that's your purple or your violet color. Okay. So we've drawn a model to represent 13 times 18. Now, you'll recognize that the four colors I've written are actually going to represent partial products. When we were multiplying a two-digit by a one-digit number, we had two partial products. This time, since we're multiplying a two by two, digit number, we actually have four partial products, okay? And so 10 times 10 is 100. I'm just going to write 100 there. And we, you'll see that right here. So the blue section is 100, 100 squares. The green is 10 by 8, and 10 by 8 is 80. You can't see that real well, but that's 80. I'll write that right there. Okay, and then the orange section will be 3 times 10, which is 30. So that's a little piece. It's just 3 and 10 across, so 3 rows of 10. And the final one is 3 by 8, which I know is 24. So that last one is 24. 
So these are our four partial products. And now we'd have to add these up to get our, our answer. So 100 plus 80 plus 30 plus 24. And we're making sure we line up the place values. So 4 plus nothing is 4. 8 and 2 is 10, plus 3 more is 13 tens. 100 plus 100 is 200. So 234. Okay, so <clears throat> that's how we can use the area model and partial products. We're going to do it again because there's different ways of breaking up the numbers. We just want to basically use something that's easy for us to do. Uh, multiplying by tens are easy. Uh, single digit multiplication facts should be easy. So we're going to draw the model again, but this time we're going to break apart the whole model to show factors different than those shown in the first time. So we're not going to use 10 and 3 and 10 and 8. We'll use two different numbers that add up to 13 and 18. So let's go down. We know it's 13 down and 18 across. Okay, so the, the two factors, 13 and 18, that was going to change. But we are going to change what we multiply them by. So let's think about our first factor. 13. What are two numbers that add up to give us 13 that are not 10 and 3? Well, I could use 2 and 11, but 11 is not an easy number to multiply by. So 10 and 3 was easy. So I could go to 9 and 4. I could go to 8 and 5. I like 5. 5 is an easy number to multiply by. I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to go 8 and 5 for the 13. And then <clears throat> for the 18, we can't use 10 and 8. 9 and 9 is easy. Let's do 9 and 9. All right. So we have 9 times 8 twice. So these are going to be exactly the same. 8 times 9 is 72. So 8 rows. So here's 8 rows. Eight rows of nine. We have another eight rows of nine. Nine rows of eight, eight rows of nine. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I was just confirming my my boxes. It was looking a little strange to me for some reason. But okay, so we have two sets of eight by nines. And then we also have a five by nine. One, two, three, four, five. Whoops. Five times nine. And finally we have Another five times nine. Now, why are they the same this time? This one was three times eight, and this one was three times ten. Well, because we're splitting the eighteen into exact add-ins. Okay, so the the number going across this top is the same no matter which way we go. So, all right. So let's start with the first one. Eight times nine. I know that that's seventy-two. If that's seventy-two, then the next one is seventy-two. This one down here, 5 times 9 is 45. And so the last partial product is also 45. So again, we have four partial products. All we did was break 13 into two add-ins. We broke 18 into two different add-ins. We then multiplied each of the numbers. So this is 8 times 9. This is 8 times 9. This is 5 times 9. This is 5 times 9. Okay, so now we'll add all those partial products, lining up our place values. And we have 5 and 5 is 10, plus 4 more is 14, 
ones. We'll regroup that as 110 and four ones. Seven and seven is 14. Four more is 18. Four more is 22, plus the regroup one, 23. 23 tens, or 234. Okay, so what do you notice? We got the same answer, regardless of the partial products. Uh, I'm sorry, regardless of the numbers used to get the partial products. So on number one, on page 114, it wants to, you to explain how you found the total number of squares in the whole model. What did we do? Well, we broke a large rectangle into smaller rectangles. Okay. So I broke the large rectangle into smaller rectangles and found the product of each. Then I added, right? Then I added the four partial products. So now, number two, compare the two models and their products. What can you conclude? So this is kind of what I was talking about, that um, the products wound up being the same, right? 234. So the products are the same. So what was different? Shows that you will get the same product. Regardless of what, um, or no matter how you break apart the model. because it's still the same. It was 13 by 18 no matter what. It's just how we broke it into smaller rectangles. So number three, to find the product of 10 and 33, which is easier computation? 10 times 11 plus 10 times 11 plus 10 times 11, or 10 times 30 plus 10 times three. Well, I see an argument for both being the right answer or the one that's easier. I think the 10 times 30 plus the 10 times 3 is slightly easier in the sense that I'm only going to have two partial products to um, add at the end. In 10 times 11 plus 10 times 11 plus 10 times 11, I'll have this same number added three times. But as far as factors go, 11 times 1 is easy. So I know that that's 11. I just put the 0 on, so it's 110 three times. 10 times 30 is 300 plus 30 more is 330. So... I can see again you multiple you're leaning either way. So ten times thirty plus ten times three. I can use the fact ten one times three what I know about multiplying by tens and a pattern to find 10 times 30 plus 10 times 3. So is that true of the other one? Yeah, really. 11 times 1. Some may say, well, that's not a math fact. Well, 
No, but any number times one is the other number. So that I am using a simple fact. Multiplying by tens might still be multiplying by a ten. It's just eleven times ten, and it's still a pattern in the sense that I know that if one number in one of the factors ends in a zero, I know I have to put at that same number of zeros in my answer or my product. So really the same. Okay, and making connections. You can draw a simple diagram to model and break apart fact, fact, factors. That's what we did in the investigate problem. To find a product. So find 15 times 24. And so we want to break apart the factor into tens and ones as much as possible because multiplying by tens is very simple. So 10, and I know that that has to be 5 because 10 plus 5 is 15. And this other factor is 20 plus 4, so 24. Now 10 times 200, 2 times 1 is 2. Each of the factors ends in a 0, so my answer has to be 200. I also have to multiply this box, which is 10, right? They both have a length of 10 here, and 10 times 4 is 40. Easy enough. Now this little piece here is 5 by how long? Well, that matches this up here, so 5 times 20. 5 times 2 is 10, with a 0 from the 20. And then this little piece here, we know it's 5 high and 4 wide. So 5 times 4 is 20. All right. So we've broken the larger rectangle of 24 and 15 into four smaller rectangles. Now write the product for each of the smaller rectangles. Well, 10 times 20, we said was 200. We said 10 times 4 is 40. We said 5 times 20 is 100. And we said 5 times 4 is 20. And step 3 would be add to find the product for the whole model. 200 plus 40 plus 100 plus 20. 200 and 100 is 300. 40 and 20 is 60. 300 plus 60, 360. Okay, and so on the bottom it says the model show, shows four parts. Each part represents a partial product. And the partial products were 200, 40, 100, 20. So let's go ahead and practice. 16 times 19. Again, we're eventually going to get to uh, a standard way of multiplying that um, that you can apply, but right now we're just learning strategies and, and how we can visualize this and, and actually wind up doing it in our head. So 16. So let's break up 16 into tens and ones. Okay, 10 plus 6 is 16. Now let's break apart the other factor, 19, as 10 plus 9. Now, 10 times 10 is 100. 10 times 9, 90. 6 times 10 is 60. 6 times 9 is 54. Now we have to add those up, right? So 100 plus 90 plus 60 plus 54. 4 plus nothing is 4. 9 and 6 is 15 tens, plus 5 more is 20 tens. Regroup that as two hundreds and zero tens. 100 plus the two regrouped hundreds, 300. 304. 18 times 26. So we see a 10, and we see the eight ones. Again, break the factors into tens and ones. 26. Two tens and six ones. Now all we have to do is multiply the factors together. So 10 times 20 is 200. 2 times 1 is 2. And there's two zeros in the factors. 10 times 6 60. Now 8 times 20. 8 times 2 is 16 with the 0 from the 20. And the last one is 8 times 6. 
48. Add up your four partial products, 200 plus 160 plus 60 plus 48. 8 plus nothing, 8. 6 and 4 is 10, plus 6 plus 16 tens. Regroup that as 100 and 6 tens. 200, 300, plus the regrouped 100, 468. 27, I can break that into 2 tens and 7 ones. 39, I can break into 30 plus 9, or 3 tens plus 9 ones. 20 and 30, 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, 2 times 3 is 6, and there are two zeros. 20 times 9, 9 times 2, 18, 1 zero from the two tens. 7 times 30, 7 times 3, 21, and we have 1 zero from 30. And last, we have 7 times 9, 63. And so maybe we need to write how we got those. 7 times 9, 7 times 3, 20 times 30, 20 times 9. Just to make sure you understand where I'm getting these products from. All right, now we add our partial products. 600 plus 210 plus 180. Plus 63. Making sure I line up the place value starting with the ones. 3 plus nothing is 3. 8 and 1 is 9. And 6 more is 15 tens. Regroup that as 1, 100 and 5 tens. 6, 8, 900 plus the regrouped 100, 1,000. So 1,053. And now this time you have to draw the model. Okay. And so we know we have a large rectangle, right? And I could have grid paper and I could do 14 down and 16 across and count all the squares. But who's got time for all that? Okay, so 14. So let's, let's split it. Okay, we know that. And let's split it this way, okay? Because we know we're multiplying by two digits by two digits, so we're going to have four partial products. And 14, I'm going to break into a 10 and four ones. 16, I'm going to break into 10 and six ones. And now this first box is 10 times 10. 10 times 10 is 100. 10 times 6 is 60. 4 times 10 is 40, and 4 times 6 is 24. Now finish it by adding the partial products. 100 plus 40 plus 60 plus 24. 4 plus nothing is 4. 6 and 4 is 10, plus 2 more is 12 tens, which will get regrouped as 100 and 2 tens, so 224. So we have a large rectangle that is 23 by 25. I want to break that up into 20 plus 3. So tens and ones. Two tens, three ones. 25, two tens, five ones. And again, we're going to have four partial products, so let's take that rectangle and divide it into four squares. This first rectangle is a 20 by 20, and 2 times 2 is 400, and we put the two zeros from 400. And then 20 times 5 is my next one, and 5 times 2 is 10, and we put the zero from the 20, so 100. Our third rectangle is, 30, is 3 times 20, 3 times 2 is 6, so 6 tens is 60. And last, 3 times 5 ones is 15 ones. All right. 
So we have to add up our partial products. 400 plus 100 plus 60 plus 15. Five and nothing is five. Six and one is seven. And four and one is five. 575. So now let's do the area model and partial products. So number six, explain how model and partial products can be used to find the products of greater numbers. One of the important things is that we can use mental math to solve these, to find the partial products, right? So basically, what have we been doing? We've been using mental math to find the partial products. And then we've been finding the sum by adding those partial products. So the greater the numbers, we just break them up into smaller tens and ones. All right, number seven. Emma bought 16 packages of rolls for a party. There were 12 rolls in a package. After the party, there were eight rolls left over. How many rolls were eaten? Well, we got a couple of important things here. We know that we have 16 packages of 12, and then there was eight rolls left. Left meaning we're going to have to subtract, right? We only have eight left. So well, I can draw a picture to start that. And I have 16. So I'm going to use 10 and 6. And in each package, we have 12, so 10 and 2. So our first rectangle is 10 by 10. That's simply 100. Our next box is 10 times 2, which is 20. And we have 6 times 10, which is 60. And we have 6 times 2, which is 12. Now what do we do? We add our partial products. So 100 plus 60 plus 20 plus 12. 2 plus nothing is 2, 6, 2, 1, 9 tens, and 100. So we have 192 rolls minus 8 that were left. Minus 8 that were left. I can't take 8 from 2, so I regroup the 9 tens as 8 tens and 10 ones. So now I have 12 ones. 12 take away 8 is 4. 8 take away nothing in this 8. And then 100 take away nothing is 100. So 184 rolls were eaten. Explain. Well, <clears throat> 16 times 12 equals 192 minus the 8 rolls left tells me 184 had to have been eaten. Right. Last page for today. Number eight. And it's a sense or nonsense problem, so mathematical reasoning. Jamal and Kim use different ways to solve 12 by 15, or 12 times 15, by using partial products. Whose answer makes sense? Whose answer is nonsense? Explain your reasoning. So let's see if they broke them up right. 12, 10, and 2. 15, 10, and 5. 10, and 2, 10, and 5. Okay, so they, they both drew the model correctly. And then, so 10 times 10, that is 100. 10 times 5 is 50. 2 times 10 is 20. And 2 times 5 is 10. Okay, so all the numbers inside the models are right. So let's see what they did when they added them. 
100 plus 20 plus Jamal's work can't be right. He left out the 50. There should be four partial products here, right? Okay, so his doesn't make sense. Okay, so let's let's say this answer is nonsense. There are only three partial products being added. We left out 50. I'm assuming that means Kim's work's logical. Let's see. Where'd she get 120? There isn't 120 on here. Oh, she went here, right? In a sense, she simplified it. So she still has four partial products, but she combined 120. That's 120. All right. And 50 and 10, that's 60. Well, this does this make sense? One hundred plus twenty is one twenty. Fifty plus ten is sixty. One hundred twenty plus sixty is one eighty. All right. For the answer that is nonsense, write an answer that makes sense. Well, we know that he was basically right with his math. He just left out the 50. Okay, so 50 plus 20, that's 70, right? Plus 10 more is 80. What's 100 plus 80? 180. All right, so that's that's reasonable. Answer. B, look at Kim's method. Can you think of another way Kim could use the model to find the product? Well, she could add all four, like we've been doing, right? She went down. Would it work the same way if I went across? 100 plus 50 is 150. 20 plus 10 is 30. Is 150 plus 30 180? Yes, it is. Okay. So she could have used one hundred plus fifty and twenty plus ten and then added those together, right? Then added one fifty plus thirty to get one eighty. So that might be simpler for some of you. Rather than adding four add-ins, go ahead and make it into two separate addition problems instead of four, four add-ins together. All right, look at the model in 8B. How would the partial products change if the product was 22 times 15? Well, if it was 22 times 15, well, I can't, I can't have a 10 here anymore then. That would be a 20, and that would be a 2. The 5 would stay the same. The 10 would stay the same. So 20 times 10 would wind up being 200. 2 times 10 is 20. 20 times 5 is 100. And 5 times 2 is 10. So how did our model change? Well, I know, now I have 200. And instead of a hundred, instead of fifty, I have a hundred. So the partial products were one hundred and fifty would double, right? Would <clears throat> become two hundred. And 100. Because the tens digit in 22 is 2 times the tens digit in 12. 
So that's it for lesson 3.3. So the area model is going to be very helpful if we, if we need to break our numbers into smaller digits to mul multiply. Uh, it's good practice for using the area model and practicing finding area of rectangles. So until tomorrow, when we talk about multiplying using partial products, may the numbers always be in your favor.